Dia Bellstar takes to the stream here to actually make Rescue Ace into a slightly more viable engine. Make sure you guys smash the ever loving crap out of that subscribe button. See you guys to miss out more awesome. We're starting things off today with the breakdown for the fifth banning cup. I always love these OCG tournament names, as they're super adorable. Uh, we had two Diabell Star Rescue Ace decks to kind of start things off. And you know, the fact that we're seeing Diabell Star actually having an interaction point, you gotta love level one fire support, right? Right, right. We also have a Phantom Knight a splash warrior toolbox pile which i haven't actually seen that deck functionally do anything in forever but the ocg has some of the best innovations out here for this deck and then of course we have vanquish soul sporting off the latest round of support and let me tell you the the power up support that this deck actually received i actually think is very very impressive at the end of the day and uh you know what you do need to be aware that this might actually be something you're going to have to keep up with here in the near future. Let's pass over to Decklist. All right, starting things off here, we have our Phantom Knight deck with, of course, Rongo Reminiad. All uh, jokes aside, I mean, this card is still an insanely power card. Like, this is going to be the entire thing that gets his deck going. Now, remember, the OCG has to play Divine Sword Phoenix Blade at home because, unfortunately, the OCG does not allow them to have massively good cards because... They've abused, they've abused Divine Sword Phoenix Blade into the floor. This deck also gets to play Heroic Call with the Morning Star here, which is a, kind of an interesting thing. And then, of course, our Submin Congo package in here as well. And then we are siding the Doomsday Star in here as well. But, I mean, all things considered, like, this is essentially the Warrior Toolbox deck. All right, you just dedicate all of your resources to expediting the Rungor Mini Ad, and you kind of roll your face across the keyboard. Um, the OCG has been very notorious for doing this. But but it's not all like always going to be this. Most of the time it is going to be this, but this is going to be the centralized point of this strategy. So pretty boring stuff, but it does help out. Now we get into the Diabell Star innovations here. The little dark witch here. Ah, uh, yeah, special summon this card by sending another card from hand to the graveyard, blah, blah, blah. On normal special summon, you add a tainted treasure directly from your deck to your hand. Uh, so you can go search for the snake eye here. Send one other card you control to the graveyard. Special summon the level one fire monster from your hand or deck. You know, this gets the Fire Hydrant to roll in here. Now, the OCG has been exploring some uh, some Aurora Dawn combos out here with the Olion, which has kind of expanded out the extra deck options a little bit more. This has been a fairly recent innovation out here on the OCG, where you're getting, you know, the combo climb up here with Aurora Dawn. Once again, kind of showcases, you know, how good that this card actually is. But at the end of the day... The Snake Eye Treasure here giving you the ability to toggle in for Hydrant is actually pretty insane. And I will say at the end of the day, I'm not exactly sure, you know, how much more value you will get off of this, but it's it's crazy just to see. And of course, we do have differences in between these lists because there were two of these that did find success out here. Once again, you're seeing that double Hydrant doing its thing. Uh, you are seeing that this list is playing the SP Little Knight. This card actually is insane. And then, of course, on the cleanup side of things down here, the Doomsday Star as well. You want to make sure that you can take full advantage of how crazy good this card is. Because being able to rip your opponent apart is going to be the instant value kill monster uh, that this is. Um, outside of that, once again, I mean, Aurora Dawn is going to be the piece that's going to hold this all together. But it is interesting just to see you know, how much more consistency have we actually added into this deck to get the turbulence play off? You literally still are turbulence or bust at the end of the day, but now you got a little bit of extra flavor, you know, especially when you can start, hey, you know, maybe maybe Apollos can come up, you know, you're getting access to the synchro board down here as well. It's kind of interesting. Next up here, we have the Vanquishal. Hello, Jiang Long down here. Uh, this card actually makes this deck a whole lot more interesting. If you reveal a card of cards to activate a Vanquishal effect, special summon this card, and you can activate one of these effects by revealing the appropriate. Uh, so if you reveal a fire, change the battle positions of one monster on the field. If you reveal fire and fire, you add a Vanquishal card from your deck to your hand. All right, who does not love the fact you get multitude searching with this? This was a fantastic addition to the deck. And then, of course, 
course, you get the one snow devil. Let's reveal up to three monsters, a dark and earth and a fire, and then apply the following based on the number revealed. So one plus, uh, inflict 400 damage to your opponent, and then you can splash summon a vanquish shoal from your hand. Uh, two or more, you inflict 600 damage to your opponent, and then vanquish shoal monsters you control cannot be destroyed by uh, card effects this turn. And then 800, and then inflict damage to your opponent, and they can, uh, then you can destroy all monsters in the field. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty good. So I'm glad to see the Vanquish Soul has overcome a lot of the uh, with the weaknesses that I feel like the deck actually had here. Now we're going to pass on over to the Saiyan Championship. Saiyan Championship is always interesting because the breakdown for these events is usually a lot more diverse. And we're actually seeing Exosister out here um, kind of being our first stepping stone for this. And Exosister is kind of in a very interesting place right now in the meta. It's obviously as much to your elements as you can kind of plow through and actually run into is going to be like the biggest things that you're going to see. Uh, we also have Mana DM out here, and let's be honest here, for as many power-ups as Mana DM has continuously gotten at this point in time, it is crazy to me just to see how much more powerful that this tends to actually get as the sets go on. Um, Mana Diem is a very scary deck at this point. And then the last deck that we have out of this is Labyrinth. Imagine a world of transaction rollback and the Labyrinth Butler out here both plaguing you as you see the massive crazy value that you know these particular monsters are bringing to you. It's rough. Let's pass it over to deck list. All right, so starting off here, we have our Exosister list. Um, actually sporting off the Doomsday Star and the SP Little Knight down here. Got to love the little extra deck innovations for this. And then, of course, I mean, we still are doing trickle, Triple Saki Tama with the one Aratama. The biggest things you got to understand with the Spirit Package is these monsters help aid you into getting into, you know, the Exosister package down here without committing to your normal summon. Um, and or committing to a special summon, really, because, uh, you know, Martha locking you into, you know, just being able to special summon for the turn is a little bit annoying, but, you know, we did find ways to access this, and I do think that this is pretty important at the end of the day here, just to make sure that you are able to access all of the Exosister things, but... This deck still remains a particularly crazy monster, and it is definitely something that you are going to have to be aware of at the end of the day here, just to combat against the metagame. Congratulations, Exosister. You have really finally earned a big W out here, and that's good. Next up here, hey, 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 it's purely... Now, this duelist is actually playing Double Rainbow Bridge of Salvation. What I find very interesting about this is most people up at this stage just got it out the rainbow bridges there was uh most people have not considered this as um anything really like for value uh the ocg has also been on this purely leap kick they've been playing triple of these for so long because they want to they want to be able to net as much draw as they can during the standby phases to generate you know the hand trap advantage lines to be able to have the additional cards for the recovery end of uh, play here and that's one of the big problems with this deck is, you know, hey, I can, you know, get the additional swing in for all of the draw power. And, you know, that's, uh, you just want to be able to capitalize on Sleepy Memory as much as you can for this. Outside of that, um, not really much splashable new stuff in this deck, but the deck is already a consistent monster as it is. So we really didn't have to push too much further into this. And then, of course, we do have Mana Diem here. We are actually playing Synchro Rumble in here, which lets you basically revive a dragon. And then, of course, you can ask about some from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except for, you know, Synchro Monsters. But that's uh, it's not really we really care about here. We also have the Crimson Dragon down here. If a Crimson Dragon or a level 7 or 8 Dragon Synchro, you control will be destroyed by Battle Card Effect. Banish it from your graveyard instead. And, of course, we are doing Ultimaya Bishy Bulkin plays in here, because why would you not play this card? Like, this card is going to be one of the biggest troublesome innovators that this deck actually has going for it. You want to take advantage of this card. You have zero reason not to take advantage of this card, because being able to expedite the process into, you know, King Calamity on your opponent's turn so your opponent can't play the game, it amazes me that people look at this card and they're like, oh, you know, I want my opponent to be able to play... No. Win the game. All right? Your opponent literally cannot. That is the greatest thing about this card. And then we have Labyrinth sporting off Iria's here. Remember, this lets you set a trap and then be able to apply that trap or be able to activate that. So turn zero D barrier your opponent, you know, big welcome Labyrinth your opponent. Um, if you notice, um, most of the viruses have been pushed down here to the side. 
And yes, that is a dark barrier statue down here. As well, it is a fiend monster. You gotta love that. Um, I don't, this card's not gonna come up all that much, but you know, when you're going through all the loops that is Labyrinth, and you're like, oh, you know, like, good luck, have fun. Um, it's it's definitely something. So there's your breakdown for the Saiyan Championship. Who we? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. Uh. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.